nice blue. Oh, get rid of our marker chalk now. Nice and clean. So we got we got 14 here. 14 and a half. 15. I don't see the 15 and a half. Hmm. I don't know where it is. 16 and a half. 17. Let's see what else we got here. 17 and a half. 18. Hmm, I think that's 19. Twenty. Twenty-one. Oh, and all the way down here. Look at that. Twenty-three. Wow. I don't see no fifteen gauge in here. It's got to be right here. There it is. Looks like 16 and a half. Right there. Huh. Huh. Oh yeah, there's the 16. Right there. 16. 16 and a half. 16. I think it's right there. 15 and a half. Because there's the 15 over here. Okay. Much like the pin block, we are now putting this plate, monster plate, in and out of the case. It's already been in and out two times, making sure all these dowels touch on the feet of the plate. These were touching, we lowered them a little to adjust the bearing. These are not touching yet. You might need a hardwood shim. Those were touching, these were touching. And those, I think two back there were touching. So we did pretty good. It should be very close. We put the original heights back. And we're going to put the plate back in now. We put paint on the feet. And when the feet touch these, a little bit of blue shows, and that's how you know. So that's going to take some time here. This pin block is looking good. It's not in yet, but it fits very well to the plate. That's what we need. Drilling some holes in the pin block to locate it to the plate. Bearing checks out down here. Drilled all these perimeter bolt holes just now so we can bolt the plate into the case. It's fitting nice. We have this block over here we're going to put back, it's the original maple piece that goes down under this hole, plate support, original little shim too. That's the next thing to glue back. And we can take the plate out now and see where our feet are touching on these dowels and make slight adjustments. Here's our dowels. See the feet are touching there. Freshly drilled holes. Those are touching. Touching here, here. 
there yet. There and there. Here's our pattern to drill for the pin block. Just little dimples so we know where the holes are. So we will continue working on these little dowels. Glue this block in. Probably after the pin block, it goes over it. We have this little chunk here that's missing. We have that little flat piece of veneer there. That goes just there. Perfect. Just like it was made for it. Here's that little piece for the plate. The plate sits on this. It goes over the pin block. Jagged wood fits right back. Should have prepared my blocks. There we go. Looks square in there. That looks good. We'll wait for that to dry, and then it will be ready to go back. We got all these holes drilled here for these plate screws. We're graphiting the threads a little so they have an easy time threading in. Helps a lot. Just graphite with linseed oil. We are just about ready to start cleaning the plate up. screw all these down now and see which dowels are touching. Almost all are touching now. And then the height will be set. Just using a countersink here. These are the original holes that the dowels were in. For the pin block. There we go. Only three. Screwing in some of these screws here to make sure the plate and the pin block are as close together as possible. Make sure there's no gaps here. <laughs> and we're going to mark all these tuning pins here these tuning pin holes on the pin block, take the plate out and drill the holes very soon. Starting to sand the plate now, smoothening it out. Started on this edge here. This is fairly smooth now. It's a little rough. This will be filled in later once we get the whole plate looking like this and fill in most of the big dents and little scratches in the old finish, fill in the pores, we can bring it over to the spray room and give it a coat and then we can really see all the little scratches that we missed and fill those in. So that's going to take some time on this monster plate. Another observation with these Mason and Hamlins is that Seems like the company did not use bitumen on their plates. There's no black underneath the bronze powder. It's just bare cast iron. There's this white filler which they use to fill the porous cast iron, which could be white lead. We're not sure. But that's what they did. There's no bitumen on these, so 
you cannot sandblast this. Sandblasting would take all of this off and it would leave an extremely porous surface and it would be very difficult. So that's one reason why we're hand sanding everything. Here's the plate, just about fully sanded for the first time. Giant plate, hand sanded, and here we have our nice, pretty soundboard. So we're going to put the plate back in the case one more time, or maybe two more times, make extra sure that all the acoustic dowels there are in contact with the plate. And then we can begin spraying the plate, putting our own bronze powder back onto it. Looking pretty good. 1930, original soundboard. Okay, this is a big soundboard. It's a lot of available grease, but it certainly is worth it. As you can see, this is the way it's going to stay. You don't have to do anything to it after this. It just stays and stays. So, uh, again, it's shellac and linseed oil put on with a rag, just like this. See? I'm going to do the black now and pull this off. When this is dry on this side, we can tape this off and just black shellac the inside of the case and that'll be permanent. If you ever strip the case, we're not going to do the, the outside right away, but uh, if we ever do, we could leave that alone. It would be beautiful inside. So we'll see. That's next. Okay, here's the double C again. Um, I finished polishing the soundboard. I didn't order a decal yet. But, we're not refinishing the piano. However, now that we have such a pretty soundboard, looking at this here on the side, I'm going to pretty it up from here to here, do a little finishing. I thought I'd show what we do. It is a 100 grit paper here. And this is pretty rough. Uh, it should have been stripped. I, I missed the opportunity when the soundboard was out. Should have stripped this. But so anyways, take a look at this. We can pass this up pretty good. The finish isn't loose and it isn't slaking off, so we can rough it up with powder paper and a wooden block. You know, sand out most of the imperfections just blacking all this out. See? Smooth it out and over here on this side. We had some damage from probably from me sanding and it made a boo boo there so we filled it in with some bondo and we have some flaking here we might have to fill it in but what we're going to do is sand all this down and give it a, a coat of black shellac uh, mixed with silica and we'll see what it does and then we can see the boo boos even better after that so we'll take care of this sort of thing we'll come back Okay, here we are part way in the process. It's original finish, like, like I said, beveled the edge a little bit here. Takes a lot of boo-boos out. And you can see we took that 100 grit paper, sanded this right down. Real good. Look at all this dirt we got down here now. That's all the old finish. Okay, it's smooth though. See, get all the valleys out. And I got to do the other side over there. But this was the rough side. All right, we'll continue. Okay, this is my black rag. I used it once before. I see inside here, we smoothened this out with a block of wood and some rough sandpaper, 100 grit. Just sanded the, sanded the heck out of it, actually. 
And what this coat is going to do is going to uh, just kind of make it black for sure, and it's going to seal it. But it'll also help reveal the stuff that we missed. There's boo boos and there's dents in here still. So let me get some of this. I like black. Black is nice. Alright, I'll start over here. Gotta make this black too. But not too far because the pin block's gotta go here. So this shellac stuff, anything can go over it. Spray lacquer over it, polyester. Pretty sure. Tell it's going to polish up nice. We don't have too many boo boos. As soon as you get any kind of finish on here, every imperfection shows. And that's what we want, actually. nice about this is you can do it right inside the building I don't think the fire department knows anything about that either if you don't spray anything they don't bother you so this is kind of a nice thing to have in the shop we can put a finish in these little places there now we'll leave that dry <laughs> let me go at it again Actually, I could start over here and do it because over here it's probably already pretty dry. Just wanna go quick. We are gonna sand this again, but only after we get some finish on here. It's good enough for now. Part two, after this dries, I'm going to be putting some silica, colloidal silica in the French polish here. And that will make a good filler and also makes the finish very hard. There, wait, we'll have to wait now. charge this up here like this. Good. And a little linseed oil. Like so. Spread this around. Yeah.
going to make it look a lot better. It's actually pretty fast, actually. If you can get the surface smooth and stable, it can look very good like this in no time. Of course, this is just the first application. I'm going to uh, keep applying it here until it's good and black and good and shiny and uniform thickness. Then we'll let that dry for a couple days. Uh, maybe I'll put the decal on, give it some time. But then, uh, before we put the plate back in for good, we'll give this another polishing like this. It'll look really very acceptable, very nice. So we're going from this to this very quickly. So there we have it. We're going to just continue. Oh, we got to put the decal on now. That's about it. Well, we had a lot of curious people asking about how much crown is in this double C Mason and Hamlin here. And uh, so we're going to do a little short little clip with our little crown profiler here and we're going to do one of them we did one we're doing this one right now we did one up there in that octave and we'll see anyway we're going to put it on the table over here and then see how much crown we have follow me you can see this you might have to like we adjust it anyways this is treble section uh, the killer octave we got 10 millimeters there under the bridge 730 millimeters long this this rib is here so let's do this one now we just pulled this out of the piano um, here's the bridge this is just to kind of show how high the crown is we had a few questions this is uh, this is the case. It's where it ends. This is where our bridge is here, and this is where you can see the molding that goes on the side of the rim. It's it's right here. This is the molding. But anyway, the case the soundboard ends there. It goes under the molding a little bit. So what we do is we hold this down, and we can draw a line here quickly just to show what's going on. It's kind of a crude line, but it gives you, gives you a little outline of what you've got. And if you're careful, you can get the pencil to lay down alongside here. And you can see the general shape of the soundboard. You can tell if it has any wiggles in it. Um, put this straight edge up against it. We're here where our case ends, that's the lowest spot. And bring this up over here to right there. And there we have it. 
that's how high our crown is. We draw a nice straight line across here and you can tell how nice and even the curve is. There's no dips or sea going or anything. It's just nice and smooth. And what do we got here in the middle? We have a One thousand seventy millimeters. Yeah. Hundred hundred and seven centimeters. Hundred and seven centimeters. And we have cheap ruler, that's what we have here. But you can tell if I go like this, I can tell that this is it's about 10, 11, 12, 12, almost 13 millimeters crown here. This is right in the middle of the soundboard. So there we have it. 13, 12 maybe. So that's, uh, that's how much crown we have in this piano.